Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, December 13th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries, we got a quick one today by Didi, just showing how to sort strings in CyberChef by length. If you are considering CyberChef your go-to tool when it comes to converting encodings and such, well, it can do way more, almost sort of a little uh, string processing suite now. And FortiGuard released an advisory that uh, vulnerability in the SSL VPN uh, daemon, and that's uh, CVE 2022-42475, is already exploited in the wild. They say they saw a one attempt or a one successful exploitation using that vulnerability. Interesting, the vulnerability was actually patched a couple of weeks ago, at least according uh, to uh, the affected uh, products uh, list here, 40 OS 723, which is the patched version was released, I believe about uh, three, maybe four uh, weeks ago. They now uh, release uh, this advisory announcing that uh, this version of 40 OS also patches this critical vulnerability CVSS score of 9.3. The problem with these hidden patches, of course, is that you often don't take the update uh, too serious. And actually, I came across a discussion on Reddit when I was looking for when it was actually uh, being released where they essentially just sort of asked that question, you know, should I apply it, should I not apply the patch? Is uh, this version of 40 OS stable enough without knowing that a critical already exploited vulnerability is being patched? Of course, you're going uh, to uh, treat an update like this a lot less uh, urgently. As far as affected versions go, well, for 40 OS, uh, the 6.2, 6 6.4, 7.0, and 7.2 version are vulnerable. 40 OS 6K, 7K, you also got the 6.0 branch that is also uh, vulnerable. And as I said, updates uh, were released a couple of weeks ago. Now, with this advisory, uh, FortiGate also uh, lists uh, various in the case of compromise that they found on these uh, on the system that was actually compromised, of course, no guarantee that this of the only set of in the case of compromise that you will see, but uh, probably a good place to start. And of course, FortiGate is not alone with vulnerable uh, VPNs. Uh, Pulse Secure is a VPN solution that had its share of vulnerabilities. And according to a report from Census, there are apparently still 4,500 vulnerable devices exposed to the internet. And Juniper has a good write-up of a recent compromise of a VMware ESXi server. We have, of course, seen a number of vulnerabilities in uh, VMware ESXi uh, vSphere these last couple of years. Uh, all of these vulnerabilities have been exploited and there have been sort of a number of compromises based on them. Uh, in this case, they aren't actually sure which one of the vulnerabilities is being used to gain access to the system. But uh, once uh, the attacker is on the system, they're sort of setting up a little shell script that's uh, being uh, run on reboot in order to gain persistence. There is a simple uh, Python backdoor that listens only on loopback on port 8000. Eight, and then in order to actually be able uh, to reach uh, that uh, particular uh, backdoor, they're sort of playing a little trick with the endpoints configuration. There is a reverse proxy that's sort of part of VMware and there's an endpoints configuration file that allows you to sort of forward uh, different URLs. They are just doing sort of a slash and then SDK and then a random ID that they're forwarding uh, to this port 8008 where their little uh, backdoor is listening. Uh, once a connection is made, then there is also a connection outbound uh, for a reverse shell. The reverse shell itself is interestingly just a simple bash one-liner and it's a copy paste from a commonly used sort of list of one-liner reverse shells. 
And then we got more fun with ping. Remember how a few weeks ago we had like that uh, remote code execution vulnerability in the free BSD version of a ping? Well, uh, Florian Opser now uh, did some fussing on the OpenBSD version and didn't find a remote code execution vulnerability, but sort of an interesting denial of service against uh, ping. Nothing really huge, but really shows how occasionally you probably want to look at uh, some of these older software to see if there are any hidden bugs like this. Incidentally, and I recorded this uh, like about uh, two weeks ago, but uh, today's packet Tuesday will also go over that uh, older uh, ping vulnerability from a few weeks ago that actually could potentially lead uh, to a remote code execution, even though that's probably not easily exploitable. Packet Tuesday will be made live, uh, that uh, video about the uh, ping vulnerability sometime uh, Tuesday morning, uh, usually sort of 9-ish, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.